Welcome to the High Performance Disciple Podcast. My name is Gareth Morgan and my goal is to help you close the gap between your God-given potential and your daily performance. What I do is I explore the explosive combination of timeless spiritual principles and high performance practices that will enable you to take control, to be courageous and to release the greatness that is in you. This conversation is designed to help high achieving, high impact leaders, entrepreneurs, athletes and pioneers turn fear into faith, confusion into clarity, frustration into focus and stress into strategy. If you enjoy what you hear, I would love for you to like it, to subscribe, to comment and share it with others that you believe in. Here's today's conversation. Welcome to the High Performance Disciple podcast, episode three. Thank you for joining me. And I'm excited to share on this subject because this has been one of the great wrestling matches for me in my journey. And I know that by understanding something of what I'm going to share today, it could really help you make sense maybe of what you're feeling right now. Maybe you're going through a season where you're feeling stuck. You're feeling trapped. It's a feeling that you should expect. I know it's not a feeling that you wake up in the morning or I wake up in the morning and think, hey, do you know what? I really fancy feeling trapped today. Like nobody does. But any leader, entrepreneur, pioneer, um, athlete who wants to make an impact, who wants to build a platform because you've got a message of transformation, you are going to have to navigate through multiple moments. And when I say moments, it could be prolonged periods where you feel stuck and you feel trapped. Why? Because there's something in you that the world hasn't heard or hasn't seen yet that is trying to make its way out of you. And if we don't understand what's happening, what we can end up doing is aborting the idea that we are trying to process or to bring to fruition because we associate the feeling of being trapped and stuck as a negative emotion and therefore therefore what i'm doing must be wrong and it's a bit like let me if i can use the analogy of um, a woman who is going to give birth like the fact that she's experiencing many moments of discomfort moments of of pain and and an agony towards the climax of the baby being born there's the pain the pain is very very present <laughs> and any, any lady who's been through this will, will know is very very present but the fact that you know that the pain is attached to a purpose that it's attached to a process that's going to produce the miracle of life it means that you you don't quit <laughs> like you don't quit you don't think right it's getting too painful now i want to just stop and get out of here you may feel like it but you you know that that isn't an option or you don't even want that to be an option because you know it's part of the process because you've observed it you've had people explain that to you and and it's a bit like that when it comes to you producing something significant in this world. You are going to give birth to the unique contribution that is inside of you. But we don't know that it's nine months. We can't exactly chart and benchmark it against the, the millions of other mothers, as it were, th that there have been. And so there are different timescales. There are different periods in which we experience this feeling of being stuck and trapped. And so we need to make sure that we have people that can help us process those feelings. Because I know, in fact, it's a scary thought, like how many ideas, how many dreams, 
have been aborted because people thought like the negative feeling and pain equals I'm doing the wrong thing or it's not worth it. And, and yet, if only maybe they'd heard a message like I'm going to give you right now, then maybe that idea that could contribute something significant to the world could be a solution to a problem in society. Maybe we'd have that right now. And I'm determined that what is in you comes out of you if you want to make a positive impact. And, and I experienced this in my life because from the age of 13, like I knew that I wanted to lead a church. I'd, I'd observed my dad um, who led a church and, and, you know, I aspired to do what he did, not because he was my dad, but because as I saw what he was doing, something resonated inside of me that said, I can see myself doing that. And very often that's how dreams are birthed. We, we start off by seeing ourselves in somebody else's story, but you're unique and you're, you're different. So whilst it may start that way, there'll become a, a moment and a time when you realize, okay, I got onto this journey because I saw myself doing it, but the unique contribution that I carry means that I'm on a different path. And, and I realized probably 18, 19, that I had a real passion for business, for entrepreneurialism. I'd seen evidence of it in previous years. You know, I love to buy and sell stuff. I, I love to come up with ways of, of generating finance. I love that creative element of creating products and that kind of thing. So I'd seen evidence of it, but I could actually see like a path. And, but at the time, it was a contradictory thought to leading a church. In fact, my belief system almost said, hey, do you know what? That's like, that's like the greedy part of you, Gareth, like trying to generate money and you need to kill that off and remain pure and remain like committed to your calling. I, I literally thought that like that was the battle that was going on. And then as years carried on, I could start to see how coaching was a key part of what I was passionate about and getting into the pathways of society. And yet I would look at that and I think, well, how can I do that whilst leading a church? Because I'd not seen it evidenced or I'd not seen it modeled. And so it would often mean when trying to create a, a way forward, especially like in leading a church and then in building a business, as I tried to create progress for these different elements, um, it would create conflict internally and i would say things to myself such as gareth you shouldn't be feeling like this almost like that the, there's a wrestling match and, and which one's going to win is it going to be church is it going to be business is it going to be creating that product or is it going to be like transforming communities and it's almost like these competing ideas in fact the definition of a contradiction is a combination of statements and ideas which are opposed to one another. A combination of statements or ideas which are opposed to one another. Another additional definition is this, a situation in which inconsistent elements are present. Inconsistent elements are present. In other words, there's an incompatibility. And that's what was going on. There were incompatible, inconsistent um, opposing ideas and statements that I was carrying inside of me. And it was creating tension. That tension would make its way into um, leading the church with my wife because she didn't have the same statements that were, 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 were in me, uh, yet we both felt called to, to, through the local church, to make an impact in society. And so we had to make sense of these things. And so there were many times when, like, literally, we would have, I mentioned this in one of the other episodes, like planning days and like, how, wow, how do I equate what I can see to where we are right now? And it would feel like, okay, it's got to be one or the other. And I'd literally got to the point, I think I shared this in episode one, where I, I, I took, it ended up being six months, but for all I knew, it could have been years. And I was committed to it you know, almost being indefinite, like choosing one or the other because the tension just got so intense. 
But I realized this, and, and this is what I want you to get, because I think somebody listening to this right now, and you are in this stuck position, you've got these incompatible, inconsistent statements and thoughts inside of you. You're saying things to yourself like, I shouldn't be feeling like this. You know, I shouldn't be in this position. And when I say in this position, I mean, you know, maybe you're saying to yourself, I, maybe I shouldn't be doing this job. But on the other hand, I feel really passionate about the job. And, and there are these conflicting feelings and statements, um, even about the ideas that you've got, maybe the ideas that you're coming up with, the plans that you've got. People are doubting or people are saying, well, that's just not this industry. Maybe you're in the wrong industry. And so, you, so you're dealing with conflicting um, comments that are being given to you as well. But I want to say this, okay, en route to the delivery of the dream that is in you, there are going to be dead ends. And the route to freedom, in other words, the route to getting what is in you out of you, that freedom to actually see it become a reality, it will look and feel like you're in a dead end. Like that's not evidence that you're going the wrong way. It's actually evidence you're going the right way. It will just feel the wrong way. I guess if you want to wrap it up into just several words, it's this, the dead end is your new beginning. The dead end is your new beginning. And, and as I've mentioned before on this podcast, I use the teachings of Jesus, the example of Jesus, the model of Jesus, who for me is um, a high performance leader. Uh, uh, yes, he's the for me, he's the son of God. I have that uh, covenant of significance that I mentioned in episode one. So for me, it's more than just a prophet, a teacher, a great example. But even if you just kind of look at it as a, a, him as a historical figure, like he's a high performing leader. And there's this moment in Matthew 26, 39, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And this is the moment, literally moments before he ends up getting arrested, betrayed by Judas, and he's going to go through the most brutal uh, crucifixion punishment for something that he hadn't done. He's going to take a, upon himself the, the, the suffering that mankind should have gone through because his role was to come and be the savior. And so he's having this moment of, of intimacy with the father. We, we have, we're allowed in to the intimate prayer that he has and it's a prayer that reveals the contradiction that he was in and and if anybody experienced the most extreme contradiction it was jesus and i'll explain why now so this is what it says it says in matthew 26 39 my father he prays if there is any way you can deliver me from this suffering please take it from me yet what i want is not important for i only desire to fulfill your plan for me. Another version says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. In other words, he's he's got this a highly um, painful emotion of, of being overwhelmed with sorrow and grief. In other words, a sense of, of, of loss, of anticipating loss. And in that moment, it's like a dead end emotionally. It's like, I, I can't go any further or I don't feel like I can go any further. In fact, he says to the father, like, get me out of here. Like, I feel like I want you to take this away from me. Somebody else can drink this cup. Somebody else can go through this process. But then he relegates his feelings to his conviction and says, no, it's not about what I want. It's about fulfilling the plan. And, and why is this a contradiction? Well, it's a contradiction because he reveals to us the fact that the plan has as part of its process this painful sense of I can't go any further or I can't progress beyond this point. There's like there's always this moment when you are en route to delivering something the world has never seen before. So there's there's a contradiction of emotion. But also look at the whole scenario here. Here is the here is the son of God. He is the creator of the universe. If you hold the worldview of the Christian faith and yet he is about to be subject, murdered and crucified by his very creation. I mean, that is a contradictory thought in and of itself. And so you can't get a bigger contradiction than that. But it lets us in on the fact 
that contradiction is part of the process. Now, you may say, well, Gareth, why does it have to be part of the process? Well, here's what I've learned. There's several things that I want to just throw at you, and I'll throw them at you very briefly, and I encourage you just to maybe slow the podcast down and make notes and process this. If you're watching or, or listening to this um, in the car, then, then do this later. But this is what I want you to understand about a contradiction. Number one, the contradiction is a contraction. The contradiction is a contraction. You're, you're giving birth to a future that is bigger than the present. And therefore, there's this contracting of everything that is inside that is going to go on, that is going to feel intensely painful. But on the flip side, it's going to be immensely glorious. Releasing greatness rarely feels great in the process. And it's amazing that we have that example to us in the process of the birth of human life. I mean, isn't human life the most incredible miracle? Like if you've ever had the privilege of having your own children, you've been there at the birth, like it is a life-changing moment. Like we, we, we know of many other babies that have been born, but when like a, a child is born and you are a parent and, and you witness this moment, wow, what a moment, but, but, but what a process, like what a painful process. And, and there are contractions that lead to that birth. And, and very often, and it happened with my wife, Leanne, we had three children, we have three children. And there were moments when uh, she felt like I, giving up, like saying things like, I, I, can't, I can't do it anymore. Those would be the kind of things that would come out of her mouth on all three occasions. I mean, they were big babies and she's a small mum, so it was particularly painful. But the contradiction is a contraction. And so at the moment when actually it's about to be born, that future that's in you, then the contractions are going to become more and more intense. In other words, it's going to feel more and more like a dead end the closer you get to breakthrough. The second thing is this, the contradiction that you carry, because again, let's look at Jesus' example. Sorry, on that last point. He was about to go through the crucifixion and then three days later, the resurrection, which was the ultimate breakthrough that uh, that would completely defeat death and bring life. In other words, um, he would create a path for mankind to be reconciled. In other words, made right with God once again. That was the plan of Jesus. And so just on that storyline alone, right at the point of breakthrough, the, the crucifixion and the resurrection came this dead end moment. I can't go on. The contradiction is your chrysalis. What do you mean chrysalis, Gareth? Well, a caterpillar eats itself to the point where it goes, enters into what they call the, 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 the chrysalis uh, metamorphosis. And without going into the in-depth, um, you know, uh, scientific steps of, of that process, we all know that ultimately the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis and in that chrysalis it becomes pulp. And then that pulp over time starts to allow a new entity to emerge called the butterfly. And in that process, a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. The future looks completely different and disproportionate to the present. But it required this, this chrysalis moment where, where if you observe the butterfly trying to emerge, it's a struggle. It's, it's feeling, it looks like it's trapped. In fact, there's a story of a scientist who, who observed the butterfly trying to get out and took a little uh, uh, knife and, and created an incision to free the butterfly to allow it to come out sooner. And of course, it was to its detriment because the wings were undeveloped. The struggle strengthens the wings. The struggle is required, the resistance is required to prepare the butterfly to enter into its new reality but it has to enter into the dead end. The dead end is the new beginning of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly. And the contradiction that you're carrying is the chrysalis. You look in the Old Testament and God directed the children of Israel when they were released out of Egypt. 
And so that's almost like kind of leaving the, the caterpillar stage and they're en route to the butterfly promised land. Remember, there's this gap in between called the wilderness. And, and God directs the children of Israel and directs them into what looks like a dead end. They end up in by the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh changes his mind and ends up chasing them. And so they're trapped between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. And of course, in that moment, it's like, well, that's the end. And people start turning on Moses, blaming Moses. And then Moses raises his staff and parts the Red Sea. And a miracle comes out of uh, a dead end. A story is created out of a moment where they are trapped, a nightmare moment when they are trapped. But it creates a story that transforms generations, that is retold time and time again and sets a new level of expectation of what people can expect from their God. You see, again, regardless of your faith worldview, the process that you're going through is creating a story of transformation as well as producing an outcome of transformation. And so every story, every storyline has has those valley moments those moments when it looks like there's no hope there's no way out you think about any film there are always those moments where literally there's the the lowest moment and it looks like it's the end and of course the 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 excitement of the story is how they manage to get out of that dead end situation the contradiction is your chrysalis Again, you know, maybe you're listening to this and, and maybe you're a person of faith and you're like, well, why has God allowed me to get into this dead end? Maybe you're not a, a, a faith person and, and, and you're asking the same question. Many people talk to God um, in moments of crisis when they don't maybe uh, admit or believe they're a person of faith. Why? Because it's almost like we need somebody just to kind of cry out to, to blame or to ask questions of. And, and God led the children of Israel into a dead end, but because he wanted to produce something in them. And this is what I've learned, that when we are often feeling trapped, it's because we're looking for a how. We're looking for a method. We're looking at what we can do. And what I learned in the, the, the probably like the 15 years, I would say, because I would say I would, I'm in a, a fresh season of experiencing freedom that has been birthed, but it's been many years of that contradiction, many years of those painful moments of feeling trapped, where I understood that what I needed was not a how, what, what was actually being formed in me was a clear who, who I need to become, and the why of my life was being formed. So here I am wanting a how, but what I need is a who. I'm often craving a what, what do I do next? And actually what I actually need is a fresh and clear why. So often we want a method, but what's actually being formed in the dead end is a message. Hope this is making sense. So the, the, the fourth thing is this, the contradiction, or the third thing, contradiction is a conflicting conversation. So you'll be talking to other people. And even as you're talking to other people, some of the things that you'll say, you're not sure you agree with yourself. <laughs> and when you're, when you're in that state, you feel unstable. Sometimes we just, we, 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 we want to know that what we're saying is what we actually believe. But there will be times when you'll catch yourself saying things and you're not sure you agree with it. Maybe you're saying things because you're, you're saying what you think you should say. And again, this is one of the contradictions. What you... What you say, which is based upon what you think other people expect you to say, is conflicting with what you really believe. Again, the contradiction. It's almost like the expectations of others that are on you are being challenged by the message that is being formed in you. Number four, the contradiction is a conviction being forged. Uh, uh, everything that is seen is driven by what is unseen. Uh, beliefs ultimately shape the world in which we live everything starts as a belief whether again positive outcome negative outcome constructive contribution or destructive contribution it all is driven by belief and so in the moment when we're trapped what i've understood is this when i don't feel like i've got a how or a what 
and the method isn't there and the message is being formed, the first question I need to ask myself is, what do I need to unlearn? What do I need to unlearn? You see, we're all, we almost have this craving of what do I need to um, add? What do I need to put on? What do I need to um, bolt on to what I've already got? But sometimes what's actually being required is that we take something off, a mindset, an attitude, a belief. Like what is being challenged? What do I need to unlearn so that I can learn according to what is being formed inside of me? You know, Jesus said in Matthew 18, verse 3, um, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's as if Jesus is saying, for you to operate in my reality, which is the kingdom of heaven, okay? It's a, it's a, a way of believing that leads to a way of living. And in order for you to exist in my reality, like you have got to unlearn a whole heap of stuff you've got to, and you've got to position yourself like a child. And you think about children, children are hungry to learn. They're always asking why they're always hungry and curious, but the older we get, we lose the curiosity. We lose the hunger to learn because our experience says that we've kind of learned enough, or maybe our world has been defined by so many events that we end up just um, repeating things and following predictable patterns. But Jesus is saying, no, you're going to have to get back to being like a child where convictions can once again be formed and forged because you're going to need a conviction that you, that you would die for in the future um, for you to persevere through the process that is going to be required for the dream to come to fruition. Right now, you've got an idea, but an idea won't get you through from the cross to the resurrection. It wasn't an idea. Oh, Jesus, an idea. Hey, I'm going to be the savior of the world. Uh, maybe I could die for the people. No, no, no. It was a conviction. A conviction is birthed in those moments when you could get out, but you say, no, I am convinced this is the right thing to do, even though everything feels completely contradictory and opposite to how I, how I uh, think right now. So the, the fifth thing, penultimate thing, the contradiction is a ceiling that's going to be broken. When you're starting to feel that contradiction, you're, you're starting to bump up against a ceiling. But that ceiling is not there to contain you. It's there for you to break through. And like the butterfly breaking through the chrysalis, that breaking through is going to have a forming effect on, on how you come out the other side. And as somebody who's going to influence other people, you need to not just think of yourself in this process, but you need to think of those that are going to be modeling who you become. That's one of the things that, that drove me through the many years of times when I th thought I'm going crazy, like with these contradictory ideas, is because I wanted my children and their children and their children after that. I wanted them to have a model of somebody who would demonstrate what they need in order for them to become who they need to become. And I knew I needed to break through the ceiling that I had. And you need to break through your ceiling. There are people waiting on the other side, depending on you to keep on going. I hope this has given you a sense of, 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 of uh, determination and, and a courage is starting to rise up inside of you. And, you know, Jesus, he, he was a walking contradiction for the Jewish and religious people of the day because the expectation on him was completely contradictory, you know, to what he was espousing. Here he was, uh, you know, talking about the, the kingdom of heaven and, 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 and a heavenly government that would ultimately allow mankind to operate in their, their God-given identity. And yet they were putting on him kind of a, a nationalistic uh, ruler, military leader that will enable them to become like a superpower in the world. Like the expectations of others will be a ceiling that you need to break through. And the final thought is this, as I come into the land, the contradiction that is in you is carving a new path. Well, what's the new path? The new path could be a new path for your family. Maybe nobody in your family has gone the route that you're going. Maybe the expect expectation level that you're setting is higher and and maybe you've had some grief because of that but i want to encourage you you've got to carve that new path for the sake of those who will walk that path in in generations to come you need to walk that path 
it, that, that may result in financial breakthrough. Uh, that may result in um, educational breakthrough. Maybe you end up going doing uh, learning in places and with people that you never thought that you would learn, but that would allow people that are looking to you to follow in your footsteps. Maybe it's an industry. Like maybe, maybe you're part of breaking the ceiling in an industry. Maybe you're part of breaking the ceiling um, in, in the environment where you work. And so you're going to come up against resistance, but that is part of the journey. In fact, if you're not experiencing resistance, then I would suggest that maybe you've set the bar too low. Now, now don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying go and rub people up the wrong way and get everybody, <laughs> get everybody's back up. But but start to journey. And of course, I'm, I'm here to help you. You can go to my website, garethmorgan.tv. And there's content on there as well as a program now that I am working on and working with called The Winning Momentum, which is to help you get the right mindset, clarity of your vision and a plan that you can run with. And with that plan, I'm going to be working with uh, groups of people on 90 day cycles because I don't want this message and these kind of messages just to be kind of thoughts or ideas. I want it to become something that you can implement. So uh, you need to carve this new path. And, and I'm so excited because the dead end that you wish you never had is your new beginning. Practical step I would encourage you to do at the end of this podcast. And I always encourage people to write things down, to journal. I want you to list your contradictions. Okay. So remember I said those contradictions are those inconsistent elements in your life. Maybe statements that seem to be opposing one another. Write them down. Okay. Get it all out of you. If you just leave it in here, um, it's, it's not being processed. It's a bit like oil. If you leave oil in the ground, it's no benefit or value to anybody. It needs to be um, extracted. It needs to be um, taken through a process of being refined so it can become useful fuel. OK, and that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Mind those thoughts, um, extract those thoughts, write them down. And, and then here's the key thing, because this is what I naturally do. And I've realized this is not the right thing to do. Don't look for answers. You may be saying, what, what do you mean, Gareth? Surely we want answers. No, no. What you're doing is you're embracing attention. Everything within us loves to resolve attention. In other words, especially high achievers, like we want to be in control, like resolve that tension. No, no, no. You, you, you are starting to embrace attention. When you embrace attention, you create an environment where thoughts and ideas and ways ahead can start to surface, but it won't happen immediately. Just start to create a faith environment. In other words, a sense of certainty that, okay, I carry these uh, elements that seem to be contradictory, but I'm cool with that. I, I'm not trying to resolve them. I'm going to manage them. I'm going to be curious with them. And so I want you to get them down on paper. And then I want you to um, process them. Don't force it like the butterfly coming out of the chrysalis. Don't be like the scientist who puts that little incision to get this butterfly out too soon. A premature dream can end up either dying or not take on the full formation of, of what it should have become. So I really want you to enter into the tension. And of course, here, uh, with the High Performance Disciple podcast and everything that uh, I'm, I'm doing and others are doing. Get into an environment where you can talk this stuff through with like-minded people because together we want to see that future come out of you. Remember, your dead end is a new beginning. I hope today's episode was helpful to you. You can get more by subscribing to my channel and I have more content and tools that can help you on your journey if you'd like to head over to garethmorgan.tv. Remember, today and every day you are a champion and there is more in you than you think.